So this, uh, today I'm going to talk on a work with my advisor, Anish Ghosh. So uh, today morning, we already have seen uh, uh, approximation of uh, matrices, real matrices with uh, non-singular integer matrices. And in that context, uh, the set of variable approximable uh, vectors came into picture. So for today's talk, I am going to concentrate on uh, variable approximable vectors on manifolds. And so the plan is that I will first um, give the review on uh, the major works done in uh, uh, case of manifolds for variable approximable numbers, and then uh, get into the analogous results that we have proved for periodic manifolds. So <clears throat> first, uh, let me start with uh, the Dirichlet corollary, which give you a quantification of the fact that uh, rationals are dense in Rn. So for every x in Rn, there are infinitely many integer, integer uh, vectors satisfying the following equation. So <laughs> it's uh, natural to ask that for which uh, vectors in Rn, you can increase the power from n to something n plus epsilon. So you take, so you define the exponent to be supremum of B such that the above equation will have infinitely many solution. So from Dirichlet corollary, uh, you can get that omega of x is for all x, omega of x is strictly greater than n. So the point of, uh, interest is that for those, for the vectors for whose uh, omega of x is strictly greater than n. So the, those vectors for which you can um, increase the power from something strictly greater than n would be called variable approximable. And uh, a classical result says that the Lebesgue measure of the set of variable approximable set has measure zero. So, <laughs> One can ask that what happens if you take a manifold inside Rn. So let's take, let's say in R2 you take a parabola and ask that uh, what is a say, what is a measure of the set x such that x x square is uh, variable approximable. So it's clearly not true that for any manifold the uh, the set will have measure zero. In fact, so if you take a just a line in R2 with uh, integer uh, slope, then every point on that line would be uh, variable approximable. So basically this ray turns out to be uh, the whole thing. So Malha in 1932 conjectured that if you take the x, x square, x to the power n type of curve, then almost every point is not variable approximable. So so in the earlier, uh, this in this kind of parabola, almost every state will have measure zero. So this was settled by Springer in 1964. And he realized that uh, the parabola be behaving like the ambient space is because of the <laughs> carvedness of the parabola, because that it is not contained inside any proper hyperplane in R2. Uh, it is behaving like R2. So he conjectured in 1980 that if you take any analytic manifold, which is not locally contained inside any proper hyperplane, then the set will have, set of variable approximable vectors will have measure zero. Uh, so before I get into uh, other things, I want to recall the definition of different and exponent of a measure. So it's just essential supremum of the exponent of omega of y is with respect to the measure. So in terms of different and exponent, the above conjecture can be thought of as that omega of f star of lambda is n for such manifolds. Uh, so here I'm going to again and again talk about non-degenerate manifolds, but without defining what exactly they are. But in case of analytic manifold, you can think of them as the ones which are not contained inside any affine hyperplane. But in general, there is a definition for non-degenerate manifold, even if uh, when it is not analytic. So, okay. 
Kleinberg and Margulis proved uh, Springer conjecture in 1998, and since then it has become a cornerstone in our subject. So I would like to first uh, just uh, mention the main tools that they have used. So the first thing is quantitative non-divergence, which is um, telling you the frequency of the unipotent orbits coming back to compact sets in uh, terms of the size of the compact set. So this is much more generalization of Dani's previous quantitative non-divergence statement. And uh, the second tool is that the set of variable approximable numbers is contained inside some dynamical set. So it is contained inside uh, those points for which the, or the for which the orbit under the diagonal flow is going to infinity at a certain rate. Okay, so you want to um, so basically this variable. So this by quantitative non-divergence, you get that this right hand side has major zero, and so you have that the set of interest has major zero as well. So here, G, by diagonal uh, action, I mean this action on, so this, uh, for every point X in Rn, you are looking at the flow in SLN plus uh, R mod SLN plus Z. So later, Kleinberg, Lindestras, and Weiss improved this to uh, more uh, in general setup in, in case of measures. They gave a geometric uh, condition on measures such that the exponent of the, yeah. So that the, under this GT action that, uh, uh, that UFX, that point under GT orbit is going to infinity at this rate. Yeah, exponentially fast. So yeah, so Kleinberg Lindstrom's wise improved this to more general setup of measures, giving a geometric condition measure, so that they can conclude that uh, exponent of the measure is n. Okay. So now let's look at uh, something which is not non-degenerate. So suppose you have a parabola inside a uh, hyperplane in R three. So you might wonder that. Now, in this case, the parabola is not in R3, so, yeah, so parabola is in R3, but uh, it is not non-degenerate inside R3, but it is somehow non-degenerate inside this hyperplane. So it can be expected that the parabola is behaving like the hyperplane, right? So uh, Kleinberg proved that uh, indeed that is the case. So if you know that the hyperplane is, ex uh, is uh, has this property that the set of variable approximable vectors has major zero, then the non-degenerate manifold inside, inside that will also have the same property. And for this, uh, the, so earlier for, while proving the Springer conjecture, only one side of the Dani correspondence was needed. Well, so I forgot to mention that, so this thing that, uh, uh, some dynamical set, So this observation was influenced by earlier work of Dani, who showed that for singular vectors, there is a correspondence with a divergent orbit, and for badly approximable numbers, it has a correspondence with bounded orbits. So, um, so in case of proving Springer conjecture, one only need one way direction, but in case of reals, anyway, both direction is true. But, and uh, particularly in this proof, you need both direction of Dani correspondence. Okay, so later Kleinberg generalized this to more and he proved that in fact, for any uh, V actually the exponents are same. So exponents are always same. It's not only that when omega of L is N, for omega of L anything, omega of L is omega of M, when M is a non-degenerate man manifold inside L. And for this, he uh, needed to extend the earlier quantitative non-divergence argument more. So, okay. So now I will go to uh, periodic setup. So before giving particular definitions, I just want to um, mention what are the results. 
So Springjuk proved the PRD version of Mahler conjecture, uh, namely that you take a parabola x x square x to the power n in a QPN, then almost every point is not very well approximable. And uh, then Kleinberg and Tomanov pro uh, proved the PRD version of Springer conjecture in 2007. And so they basically proved the ace arithmetic version of uh, quantitative non-divergence. And they proved uh, that the set of variable approximable numbers is inside some dynamical set in PRD setup as well. So in, okay, and they conjectured that uh, similar results as in case of R holes for QPN, that if you take an affine subspace, then if it is extremal, that is almost every point is not very well approximable, then any non-degenerate manifold inside that affine subspace will also behave similarly. And uh, Kleinberg later also asked the more general question that whether omega of L is omega of M as uh, it holds in case of reals, whether that's true for periodic manifolds as well. Okay, so what are the first, what was the first challenge in case of, uh, so we could answer this question. So the second, uh, the last one, uh, this itself uh, includes the, this conjecture. So, uh, so we could answer this question. So what was the first uh, challenge? So we already knew that number theory, from number theory you can go to dynamics, but uh, from dynamics, whether you can, can come back to number theory was not clear at all. And the reason be, be, behind that uh, is indeed in the definition and the dynamical system that you need to consider for case of periodic setup. So in case of periodic, uh, so the dynamical system that we are considering here is So one point being very well approximable under some diagonal flow, it is uh, the orbit is the orbit is going to infinity at a certain rate. So if you consider just GLN of QP, then any lattice is co-compact. Co so there is nothing, no concept of going to cusp. So you have to uh, artificially include uh, R component as well. And so this is the setup. Now you are approximating with Z points. And so when you go back from here, if you try to go back from here to the number theory, you are going initially uh, getting points from Z1 over P. So it's not clear uh, how to get from dynamics to number theory, but uh, we somehow managed to do that. So, but for that, we, we introduced another PID different and approximation, which is more suited with this um, homogeneous dynamics. Although they are, uh, but they turned out to be the exponents of this new approximation and the previous, which was um, considered by Kleinberg Tomanov and earlier by Springjuk, has a nice relation, relationship, which I will say. So the theorem is exactly the PID analog of Kleinberg's earlier work that uh, exponents will be inherited by non degenerate manifold inside the affine subspace. And also, uh, the, so also it will be infimum of all the exponents of the points. Okay, so, so now the definition. So the usual definition that was earlier taken was that if y is in QPN, it will be called Vz approximable if there are infinitely many Zn plus one points such that the following uh, will have solution. And um, the exponent is the supremum of V occurring in that equation. So uh, one first difference from case of R is that here it's coming Q tilde, not Q. And that is because uh, Z is uh, dense in the, uh, the unit ball of QP, so it's trivial. Uh, and uh, there is a Dirichlet theorem in PID setup as well, 
which tells you that omega of y is always greater than or equal to n plus 1. So natural to uh, call the vectors which for whose omega of y is strictly greater than n plus 1 to be very well approximable. And now this is the definition that we considered. So you call a point Z1, Vz1 over P approximable such that there exists Q tilde in Zp, Z1 over Pn plus 1 with unbounded this component, this product of periodic norm plus, uh, times uh, the product of infinity norm of Q tilde such that the following equation will have solution. Uh, and as usual, the exponent is the supremum of V occurring in that. that. So, if you, so if something is approximable according to this definition, if something is V approximable according to this definition, then it will be V minus 1 approximable according to this definition, but the other way, other way around is not true. Although, uh, it is true that the exponents are one plus the another for every Y. And so this allows you to prove anything in case of like this new definition when it comes to exponents, proving uh, any uh, one in one setup will give you uh, the result, similar result in another setup. So, okay. And for the reason to consider this new type of approximation is because it's directly connected to dynamics. Uh, okay, so, so this is my dynamical, this is my homogeneous space. And if you take a y in QPN, you associate the lattice ui d, so d is just z1 over p. Uh, and so ui has, ui has two components, p, p part and infinity part. p part you take one, the unipotent element, and the infinity part you take just identity. And for diagonal, part you take uh, such that the product of the determinant of this is 1. And uh, we proved that if you take y in QPN, uh, then this following thing happens. So if y, y omega p of y is greater than or equal to v, where v is strictly greater than n, uh, there so for every d less than c, there exists arbitrarily large t such that delta g t y d n plus 1 is less than equal to p to the power minus d t. So now this allows us to prove the similar, the result that I earlier stated. So now there are another um, more theorems which are again the periodic analogs of plan box previous work. So if you take an affine soft space, which is suppose parameterized by a matrix A, and it is, it will be interesting to know whether the exponent of the affine soft space is, is somehow related to the matrix that, by which it is parameterized. But in general, this is not known yet whether this is true. But if you impose some condition on the matrix A, then you can say that the exponents are well related. So in particular, if your affine subspace is just, if your affine subspace is a hyperplane, then you have just the matrix is just a single term, single column. So anyway, this condition is satisfied and uh, this exponent will be related. So another thing is that if you take any connected analytic manifold of QPN, and if one, you know that one point is uh, one, one point's exponent is less than equal to V, then for almost every uh, Y also exponent is less than equal to V. So in this case also, so the, the proof is like, uh, so you start with some omega P of Y less than equal to V. You know by both um, side of Dani correspondence that there exists some dynamical set a dynamical condition. And then you use quantitative non-divergence. Which will give you again a dynamical, okay, so I don't know how to, uh, so this from this here, by quantitative non-divergence, and that will give you again a dynamical result for almost every point. 
And then again, you use Dani correspondence to get back uh, results for almost every y. So this also tells you that if one point is not variable approximable, then almost every point is not variable approximable. Although this can be shown from the earlier result that the four exponents are same. From there also you can conclude that uh, this theorem holds. Um, we could actually prove kleinbock tomanov conjecture in more general setup of multiplicative approximation, uh, but uh, that is not, uh, that requires more explanation. Uh, and uh, these are the links of my papers. And I want to conclude here. Thank you for your attention.